Namaste. I am Reshma. In Navaratri with normalcy, the week would have seen thousands of dancers mesmerizing audiences in packed sabha halls and temple mandapas. As the world went quiet with social distancing, the symbols and chilankas slowly emerged and reincarnated itself to the digital stage. Art has now become officially webified with multifold of information being made available online. In association with Ritambra Kochi, I present to you one such digital interaction with a very senior alumni of Kalakshetra, Srimati Girija Ravindranath. Srimati Girija is a postgraduate in Bharatnatyam from Kalakshetra, Chennai. Close Guru Shishya Association with Srimati Rukmini Devi, the founder director of Kalakshetra, has been an incredible influence on Srimati Girija. She is also the winner of Government of India Scholarship in Bharatnatyam for Advanced Studies from 1980 to 82. She has been part of many of the Kalakshetra dance dramas that were choreographed by Srimati Rukmini Devi herself. Srimati Girija has also travelled with the Kalakshetra team to perform in many cities in India besides performing in many countries as well like Sri Lanka, Philippines, Vietnam, North Korea, Hong Kong and China. With her proficiency in Carnatic vocal and violin and her creativity in choreography she has been teaching students for over 20 years now. She is currently Artistic Director of Ritambra, a forum for promoting promotional arts and visual arts in Tripontra, Kochi. I would also like to proudly add, she is my guru, presenting a digital interaction of Srimati Girija Ravindranath. Girja ma'am, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for this uh, digital interaction. Welcome. And my uh, first question to you is about how you commenced your journey at the great Kalakshetra. Students today have heard a lot of stories about uh, master creators like Lukmini oh, Devi wow. Arundel. But you have had the divine opportunity to witness some of these human gods creating magic. Tell us about how you commenced your journey. My journey, how it commenced in Karakshetra, more than that, how, it, how I reached there. When I was very small itself, I think all children like to dance. Similarly, even I like to dance and my mother was quite interested in uh, allowing me to take it up. So, when I was five years old, I started learning from somebody, one Tangamani, one teacher over here in Tripunitra. And then the next was, I was uh, put into a school, RLV school. The, the, those days, the RLV Music College was attached to a uh, UP school. So I was joined there because my mother thought that I could learn dancing side by side. So I went there and then uh, it was Shadow Gopinath who was teaching folk dancers and all that there. And so he, I became his student. Though I was not allowed to join at that time and when, I, when you are in a you know, second, first standard, second standard. But still I did because I went to his house in the afternoon because I had only class in the afternoon. And all the time, my mother used to say, you see, see Vilasini teacher who is from Kalakshetra, if you want to go to Kalakshetra and learn dancing, you have to get good marks. <laughs> so study well, and I will take you to Kalakshetra. So that was, that had become my dream. And this uh, Gopinathan, uh, Shadow Gopinath helped me in the initial stages to learn dancing and then later on I learned Bharatanatyam with some of the students of this Kalashita Vilasini. 
and it's it was only after that when i came to the ninth class uh-huh. i left tripunitra and then i went to Ch- ernakulam i was in the hostel in the meanwhile my father bought me a violin so he wanted me to learn violin because okay. i was already learning dancing and then he thought i was already learning music vocal music why not violin so i started learning violin with the hari master tripunitra hari master mm-hmm. he taught me for two years i learned violin when i was in uh, saint rises though i took part in some of this you know the youth festivals were just starting and i took part in one of the fest, uh, group dances from uh, saint rises and he got a prize of course and but it was only violin i was learning and then after two years we were relocated to uh, me and my younger brother was taken to chennai that is when i went and joined kalakshetra so my parents fulfilled their promise and they took me to kalakshetra but i was learning only violin oh. in kalakshetra yes in kalakshetra you could take a main subject that is when you if you're doing schooling also you could do your school lessons side by side but only for the main subject you go to the uh, fine arts college okay so that time uh, and i was learning by okay i was so uh, i used to feel so upset when i saw everybody dancing and any programs <laughs> i remember i didn't know why but i cried i was seeing this parastilana on the stage some you know it seniors doing and i was in school i was doing my 11th i think 11 years of school and then i sat there and cried and i clapped too much and one of the teachers came and told me you shouldn't clap so much reduce so and i all this put together i started crying then i realized yeah i'm missing dancing so much mm-hmm. and i did one more year of pre degree pre university in chennai but staying in kalakshetra they allowed me to stay there and go to the college outside okay. and when i finished that immediately I came back and joined for bharatnatyam classes but i never told them that i had already learned because the three years had taught me that it is better to start in the beginning not to tell them that you know you have had some okay. uh, already some uh, knowledge of dance practical so that's how i started dancing <laughs> dance lessons in kalash so that was a long cherished dream to finally join kalakshetra i guess yes it was <laughs> it was a great thing and uh, you also mentioned that uh, you first joined uh, by learning the violin uh, yes in fact i think a lot of people probably see kalakshetra as an institution that offers training in dance and specifically probably in bharatnatyam uh, mm-hmm. but kalakshetra has a lot of offerings uh, instrumental oh, vocal yes. arts can can you tell us about some of those and how was your course structured ah Kalakshetra had Bharatanatyam was one of the main uh, subjects which we could choose. But if you took Bharatanatyam as your main subject and you joined there for a full diploma, four-year diploma course, you had to learn theory, of course, then art appreciation, the languages, that is some bit, some amount of Tamil, some amount of Sanskrit, uh, and vocal music. if you if you were so it was if it was so difficult for you to sing then they would at least make you learn some uh, one instrument at least okay any instrument so something to do with music you should know that is you know if you're dancing you should be able to say this this is swaram and this is sahityam mm-hmm. yes so uh, and so that way uh, they had all these things and then you could te- choose any of these but they were all individual courses there were students who came for veena only veena though they had their main subject veena but they had other theory and this art appreciation and the languages all that they also had to learn okay mridangam violin mm-hmm. and also art that is painting mm-hmm. and kathakali of course kathakali was also there so this painting also i used to wonder why painting in this you know performing arts then i realized you know uh, uh, rupuni devi must have thought 
art i mean bharatanatyam dancing is not complete with any of these without any of these so she must have thought that it is not enough you just learn the techniques of dance and agrayam and somebody will sing for you and then you dance you should know what you are doing so you know you should know you should have a, a knowledge about what you are you know presenting in front of an audience or even for yourself so that is how i think she structured the whole thing about four years of diploma and then two more years of um postgraduate diploma but i'll tell you whether it is four years diploma or two years of postgraduate diploma i never learned that to honor okay. they don't teach they don't think that you are good enough to reach that stage if you stay on okay and then they will ask you to take classes for small children first years and all that and then that is how you learn initial that one okay there is you don't learn that one all right okay but this was the how I, the and beautiful of course beautiful campus with huts as our classrooms and I just fell in love with the place. The first time I went there, okay. the first time I went to join, mm-hmm. I just fell in love with the place. Beautiful campus. Wonderful. Yes, that is how the structure of the uh, you know the courses. Okay. And you could finish your in those days. You didn't even have to have a you know tenth class pass or anything. You you could go there even if you were in seventh standard or anything. If you could write and read, that was enough. Okay. you know because again you know that is also important because in that at that time there were great artists who were not very qualified that, that is qualified means not even 10th class or uh, college or any of those things but they were great artists okay. and they could read they knew sanskrit they could knew many languages all this was there but still so then you could do that but then i, I think after it became a uh, university Dean University or something, then they have changed. All right. Okay. Yes. So, ma'am, you were talking about uh, the uh, strong teaching pattern and uh, the l- discipline that is given to multiple subjects that are being taught at uh, Kalakshetra. So, basically, training an individual to be a complete performer. Uh, besides uh, being a soloist uh, kalakshetra also has a lot of uh, group uh, dramas in fact during the covid period the uh, general public got an opportunity to see some of these uh, through the youtube channel of kalakshetra uh, can you tell us about some of these uh, dramas does everyone get to be a part in it because you were part of uh, the team <laughs> the year i went there i joined that was in 71 i think they had just finished the previous year i think they just finished uh, the ramayana series the six ramayanas okay and there was some type of a i mean kind of a celebration like a celebration feeling you know everybody and when i went there uh, they rupni devi that year she she choreographed matsya avataram kurma avataram then the next year it was kuchelo pakshanam i think no uh, yes kuchelo pakshanam dhruva charitam some or oh, you know so many like that and at that time i was not a dance student i watched all this because you could as a student you could go for this um when the art festival took place mm-hmm. in december usually it is during the holidays no not during holidays just before and you could go in the evening and you know go inside uh i watched all that i was just mesmerized the stage and this whole atmosphere is beautiful and of course the music and dance was which was my passion always and i was not there i was so you know upset that i am not there on stage not doing anything i'm only a you know spectator so when i started dancing uh i didn't think that any of us will be given any parts in the dance dramas mm-hmm. but i knew that uh, choreographies go on and you know all, my, some of my friends who were dancers from dance students from the beginning uh they were all, all in the choreography so they used to talk about akte said this and akte said that and then krishnamani aka said this and she taught me that you know things like that we i would hear so much about the uh choreography and 
uh, first year we joined, I had a good set of friends, my classmates. We are, we are only about five, six, seven, ma maximum is eight. And I think even this eight is too much for a class. Oh. Mm. So, and uh, I had a good set of friends who were very much interested in dancing, not just learning something, you know, like that. And serious about it. And we would go and watch these again, first year, second year. Of course, we are not given any chance. We are, not, we are taught folk dances, but even that we are not taken for any programs. or anything. We never thought that we will be. Okay. Anyway, we would watch. But the third year came and all of us in our class, each one got some little parts in the dance from us. Okay. It was very, we were all very happy. And I realized I was given a character role. It was a very tiny role, small role, okay. but still it was a character role. And I had to be in this huge stage alone. Oh my God, it was so scary at the same time and so exciting. <laughs> and I was supposed to do Shabari in Shabari motion. Okay. Now, yes, Shabari is an old lady uh, uh, waiting for Rama to come to give her, um, you know, motion. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I, I was very thin and, uh, you know, kind of skinny and all that. So I thought maybe that is why Rumi Devi told me, I mean, gave me that part. Sometimes, you know, she looks at the people and how they are structured. She also uh, gives the um, characters like that. She chooses. And uh, so I was given this. And then these dance dramas, when you are given a part, even if you are given a small part, like first thing, usually you are given a part as uh, one of the maids doing chamaram, okay. you know, for the king in the okay. court. Okay. And when you do this chamaram, you could just stand there and do the chamaram, maybe smile, that is enough. Mm -hmm. But no, you that's not enough according to Kalashita. So you are given this uh, uh, character of doing the chamaram, chamaram girl, and you have to go to Sharada Mami. Now, Sharada Mami is the encyclopedia of Kalashita. I would say she's an encyclopedia of, I don't know what, but she knew all the arts, she knew so many languages, she knew all the scriptures, she was such a learned person, Sanskrit, Prakrit, anything you ask, she she would know, She you go to her, ask her anything, she'll tell you, and it's not, in, she doesn't even have to refer to any book, no, everything is in her head, so when you're given a chance to do this chamaram, you go to her, you tell her, this is a drama which I am taken and I am doing Chamaram in this role. So you don't even have to say this drama, then she will know, okay, you are doing Chamaram in this. Then she will tell you all about the scene plus the story of the drama and so many Upakathas, you know, it's just not the story alone. Okay. What all happened, which is not in the drama also, she will tell you. So that, you know, you get a backup like. And you are standing there and watching like in uh, like in uh, Rama Vanagamanam where Dasharatha I think there must be a scene like that Dasharatha is um, very upset because Rama is going off to the mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, forest mm -hmm. and if you are uh, one of the maids or something in a girl, um, Chamaram girls in that you had to react to what is happening there, like Dasharatha is upset, Rama is very um, calm, Sita is like this, Kaiki is angry and uh, Kausalya and Sumitra, they are upset. But you cannot be straight away upset or happy or anything, you have to just react to what is happening. Okay. And, and that too, that reaction is not with mudras, only looking. Maybe there is another girl on the other side doing the chamaram. Or to yourself, you just act, oh, so sad and oh, so happy, things like that. And you have to give the proper and apt side actions. They are called side actions. Okay. So she would tell you even that. She will teach you, she will prepare you for the drama. It was beautiful to go to her and listening to so many stories. Like I was I was given a chance to do uh, um, Shuddhodana's go to me in... Uh, Buddhavataram. Oh, okay. And uh, Buddhavataram, I was doing Gautami. She, mm -hmm. Gautami is uh, uh, Siddhartha's aunt who brings him up because her mother passes away. 
and she when when I went to her I told her this she told me so many stories you know like how this Buddha sat on under a tree and he was meditating he, as a uh, young prince young boy and how the you know the sun set on the other side but then uh, the shade was always for him and it, actually it would have come on his face but it didn't okay. you know those things like how everybody was so surprised seeing this you know this story is not there in the drama nothing I, mean, I have never heard about this story but she knew that, her, she, that is why I say she was a encyclopedia so like that we we got chances to do uh, uh, pro, I mean uh, part, take part in the drama I, I also did and the same year I also did Gora Rakshasi do you know Gora Rakshasi of uh, 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 Sri Lanka uh, the, the Ashoka Vanam mm -hmm. and it was very difficult <laughs> for us to learn you know because suddenly you are doing Taiya Tai and then um, you know Alaripa Jadusaram Shabdam and then you are just starting learning violin Varnam and that is when you are given you know, I am characters like Gora Rakshasi. But of course, your senior teachers like Krishnamayaka, Umaka, all of them, they teach you, they explain to you, they help you a lot. So that's how the, the choreography happened. And of course, this Buddhavataram, I had this chance of, she co co choreographed on me, that is Rupani Devi. Okay. It was great to be in her presence. Of course, you're all there and so you know, continuously you are alert what she is saying because if you look away or something, Enna ma, in the background, okay, na sort of kale. So she would say things like that and then sometimes you wouldn't understand what she is saying. And then Krishnamayaka was always there to, you know, help you like that. It was a beautiful journey, beautiful experience to be taking part. And also, some of sometimes you they would tell you, you know you should get into the part you should become one with the art, um, character. But then I realized, am I going too much? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then, then I realized, <laughs> okay. Then I, I I once I was doing Kausalya in Rama mm -hmm. and uh, already you know you are on the side stages and you are kind of you are calm because the scene is very sad because Rama is going to leave. And you are supposed to do one slokam where you bless Rama. Mm -hmm. And the whole situation is so upsetting. And we had to be, we, we could not be, you know, chit-chatting on the sides uh, of the stage, talking to friends. Mm -hmm. no, we had to all stay calm. And then I also went on stage. Dasharatha, um, uh, my master, Janadana sir, is there. And uh, he's a, he's a Dasharatha and my some friend of mine who is Sumitra and then there is this Uma, Umaka who is my teacher. She was a Kalikeyi, she is standing there full of, you know, uh, she is angry and she, I mean, she is determined to see that trauma goes. So the whole scene happens and, and you react to the whole scene and then finally when it came to my scene, my time to give Rama the, uh, the blessing, the, the sloka, so, yen mangalam supernasya, what all blessings um, uh, Vinata gave to uh, Garuda? Okay. Uh, those blessings, all that I give you. So, like that, so many, so some things and I, I bless you like that, uh, uh, Rama, so she tells that. So, you know, I am supposed to take Chanadan, sir, he is my son. So, okay, I take him to the front of the stage and then I tell him, Yen, Mangalam, all that. And then Supernasya, you are supposed to sit in um, Garuda Mandalam in front. And then I realized I was so involved in the character, I, start, I had started kind of crying and had controlled my crying and my nose started watering. <laughs> And then I had to do this. <laughs> no, you, you couldn't wipe or anything because you're doing super nasya, vinata, all that you're doing. Ah, then I realized you should not get too involved in the scene, a character. So those are all due. And then of course, okay, this all this happened and after that drama was over, later on, not that time, later on, uh, you know, then sir called call me and said, Girija, your acting was fantastic that day. I was so moved. 
Then I realized she doesn't know what trouble I went through. <laughs> so that's how. Okay, that was just some something which happened to me. Oh, but it was beautiful. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Blessed to be. Uh, uh not just associated but to have worked with them and under them yes 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 under them yes yes, yes. so ma'am so many fond memories of uh, your uh, learning at kalakshetra is there uh, any one particular episode that uh, you really cherish very close to your heart any one fond memory you want to share everything was for memories <laughs> you know i told you already i just fell in love with the place first time i went there yeah. the campus was so beautiful i thought oh my god we can play hide and seek so much of land and so many places to hide no so when i started when i came when they first in my 10th class okay. then for memories everybody was so it was like a gurukula you know like our the a warden we had a warden who was originally she was a uh, rupani devi's singer i mean mm-hmm. when she danced mm-hmm. this part paduri chapadmasini dr padmasini she was a homeopathic doctor mm-hmm. she used to sing for ate and then later on after some years she decided i'm not singing anymore there were other people and then she she became the warden for us but not, not only warden she used to manage the whole campus i think some 100 acres of land or something okay. she did uh, vegetable cultivation that this cows all that she used to look after at the same time she used to teach us bhajans i know so many bhajans evening bhajans we used to sing every day in the hostel mm-hmm. and also in the morning before breakfast we did some shloka she taught us uh, purusha suktam all that she taught us so uh, she was also there and then so everything again this purusha suktam learning purusha suktam bhajan everything was so beautiful for me i loved it all so how okay, can there is no one memory one form memory but then uh, you could say which was very unique like rukmi devi used to sometimes she had guests coming you know foreigners sometimes some in time indians and sometimes she brought them to the hostel to have din lunch or dinner with us okay. mostly lunch and so then that time she used to ask some of us girls to do the serving mm-hmm. and then we got a chance to she would say okay dress nicely and come that is all you don't need to do extra or anything but then she would instruct us how to serve what to serve which direction to go which to which dish to serve first and after that how to ask them if it is enough and you know how to make them comfortable after they finish their food get a, a, after a, when they come out and sit in a place all that she taught us arrange the place mm-hmm. like padavija was there always to help us i mean with her we were there so you know she would tell us how to wear a sari and how to beautifully choose colors Mm-hmm. all this everybody knew like paduri cha uh, of course akte then sharda chinna sharda teacher and then maradam teacher maradam teacher was in uh, in charge of the costumes section okay. so all of them had such good uh, traditional color combinations they knew so it was after coming back from kalakshetra to kerala it was so natural for me to wear green and red <laughs> you know and everybody was so shocked over here or oh, purple and mustard and now of course after some years it became more common but you know those type of color combinations and nice at the same time we had this paduri cha who was for me she was my second mother like you know she was so caring at the same time she was very strict I remember when I was before I started da- learning dancing. Once I wanted to go for a movie, and she didn't allow us. And I was so upset. Then I told her, "You, you should not do this." I have my mother told me to go and see the movie. Said, "How come you are not allowing me?" <laughs> I think she didn't have the answer. <laughs> you know, I was a teenager just showing. <laughs> anyway, we went through all that, and we became such great friends. She would, you know, they, we had this cyclones coming in Chennai. and kalakshetra is just near the sea yes. and she would take us to the ba- uh, uh, beach in the rain and all that and then i remember feeling the sand on my face and you know hands and all that because it was flying and she was 
she, she was very adventurous. She took us. Okay. Some of us girls who wanted to go with her, and she used to also also take us for bhajan, uh, some bhajan rendition in some other places. Some okay. people will invite us for bhajan, and then we will go okay. with her. Okay. Similarly, you know, activities in the in, in Kalakshetra is complete. Again, I like a Gurukulam. Like I never wanted to go home for holidays. It was so beautiful to be staying there in the hostel. Of course, the kitchen was open, so it was good. And especially this Navaratri times, they had a beautiful collection of old, uh, uh, old statues and crystals and all kinds of things. You know, a lot of lamps, very rare lamps. Okay. So, Father uh, teacher, we will arrange the whole kolu, you know, kolu, mm -hmm. uh, arranging all the, it's not dolls. All these things were arranged and all these various different types of lamps were lit. So, we all helped. So, we didn't want to go home. Me and my friends, Stella, Sudha, Deepanjali, so many of us were there. We never went, went home. We stayed there. Mm -hmm. And then she used to do another thing. Was every day morning, we had the Dalita Sahasranam and Puja. And uh, in the evening, she would say, okay, now you go to this man's house, this teacher's house and invite them for Kulu. Okay. So, we would take Kumkum and all that and go to their house. And then they would make us sit there and sing something and they will come back. So, you know, you felt like a home. Even uh, though she was the warden, she, she contributed so much to the culture, the way we were brought up, you know, the impression. It's so... It was fantastic. So, fond memories, how can I say one fond memory? <laughs> Everything was fond. Everything, yes. Yes. And um, constantly you've been talking about how uh, the culture that you were taught at Kalakshetra has, has transformed you into a different person. So, hmm. years later when you started teaching dance to other students, so that, that rigorous training that is imbibed into you, the methodology that Kalakshetra has uh, put into you, did you want to give the same kind of training, discipline, culture to the students here at Kerala and that is why you started teaching as well? I would say yes, 100% yes. I would have done this anywhere in the world, wherever I was, I would have done this. And I would have seen that if I started classes and if I had children coming to learn from me, I would not teach just dance. I would teach them a way of life which is also possible and which is very Indian. That is one thing which Rubani Devi, um, you know, encouraged us to be. I mean, I think when she was young, this Western, uh, you know, attitude and uh, way of dressing and all that was becoming very, you know, you know very fashionable to be like that. Okay. So even I used to wear some jeans and all that and then all that was not allowed in Kalakshetra. We had to sneak and do them <laughs> if we did anything. But there was also this side, you see, which was so beautiful. So I wanted all my children, all, all the students who came to me to know this, that there is this part of our land which, is, which we should be so proud of. Not that you shouldn't, you should say the other one is bad, nothing like that. Go, go ahead. But still, give it that dignity in your mind. Maybe the uh, people around and the environment around, maybe they, it may not be the same. But in your mind, feel that it is beautiful and it is for all times, forever. Yes. yes. We were talking about how you commenced uh, training other students here in Kerala and uh, you would al always get a mix of students uh, while some would look for quick learning, some would like to spend more time, take years and then uh, learn at a sm slower pace. Uh, as a guru, what is it that you look in students uh, uh, and the pace that they want to learn or any other aspect? Uh, you know, this term guru is something very, we have to use it very carefully because we are all just instructors. Mm. You become a guru, that's another level. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> teaching uh, young children, actually when I first started teaching, 
I had very few students, one or two or three. And I thought, oh, what is happening? And then I knew because those days the competitions in Kerala were very, very, very strong. It was going on. And then my style of dancing will not agree with that because uh, I had gone for some judging and uh, it was a disaster as far as the, uh, the, the organizer was concerned because I couldn't give any marks to anybody. <laughs> and it was so difficult for me and I wanted to go, have all those children, you know, to come to me and I wanted to talk to them and then I realized, no, that is taboo. You cannot do that because then, okay. you know, you they will say you have some favoritism, things like that. But I wanted to do that so much because everybody has so much of talent, but, you know, the way it is channeled is what was, I mean, it was not very... Uh, I didn't think it was very aesthetic. So, <clears throat> teaching over here, uh, children came to me to learn, very few. And I already uh, sent out feelers that I'm not teaching for the competitions, that I will not teach one item and then, you know, they could go and program and do programs. And so slowly that got, uh, people came to know about it and they started coming only for just learning. And so parents would bring young children because they have in their mind that the child, either the child needs some, you know, physical uh, activity or the child needs a good culture, Indian culture, to imbibe culture. Uh, after some time, I think they realized that I also uh, do that, not just teach dance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> a lot of children come just to learn and they go off. They, I, while they are learning with me, they learn for some years and then they go off and they never think of dancing. I mean, maybe they think of dancing, but they have no interest even to come and, you know, once in a while to perform, I mean, you know, to join the class. Okay. So that is when I think that even though they have learned for so long, they have learned so many items, why not just come and at least do? It doesn't matter even if you don't sit in Aravandi or do your Nadi Aravandi, but, you know, just for the love of it. So when you say just for the love of it, that is when you say about passion, you know, about dancing. If you have that passion, you cannot stop dancing. Somewhere or the other you will. But, uh, so I used to look for that in children. Mm -hmm. And it also, and uh, I would prefer people who are uh, wanting to learn the slower way, my way. And I realized after some years that there were quite a few. Initially, I was scared to start dancing because you know, I didn't know, again, this uh, youth festival. And it was Shyamala uh, <coughs> from Dharani School of Performing Arts who gave me the confidence. She said, Girija, you start. There will be children who want to learn just art for art's sake. And my mother was very much interested in me starting a class because she was, she had such dreams of makeup, being, makeup, becoming a uh, uh, you know, dancer, but then that didn't happen. By the time I had two sons, they were so naughty, I had to look after. So she, she, I think she, in her mind, she compromised and she said, why don't you learn, start teaching? So that is when this ladies club uh, hall was uh, given to me. In the sense, there was no dance teacher there. So the ladies club used to have a dance class and there was no teacher and I was asked. And that's how I started teaching. So, uh, I, I do have children. Sometimes uh, children do get a little upset because and leave. One thing is okay. They are naturally, some children are lazy. They don't want to have the pain and all that. But some children realize that certain things are not right in them. And I'm, you know, it's, it looks as if I'm picking up on them, like, you know. And that is when I realize that I, I cannot help it because I want them to you know, overcome that difficulty in their physical. They, some children don't have coordination. If you ask them to look to the same hand and to look, they cannot do it. You know, these things you realize and then you kind of, you want to tell the parent and then, and then you think that, what is the point? Anyway, they'll go to school and they're getting good marks. They'll get good results and they, <laughs> you know, become good, good jobs. So should I say some some of them I tell, but otherwise uh, I do notice. So I wish they would all stay on and you know get into 
perfect with happy with their fam own, own body and comfortable with their own body mm-hmm. yeah okay okay yes uh, yes and um, uh, maybe something that uh, has become very uh, visible these days is uh, the method in which uh, performances are rendered Uh, there is uh, in fact a lot of focus on every aspect uh, the pre performance the actual performance uh, sometimes uh, dancers perform on teams so the kind of topics that they choose and the post performance and there is also a lot of uh, marketing uh, of uh, programs that has happened uh, uh, people would like to use a lot of digital media to uh, announce their programs as well as get feedback as well So do you do you feel that there is a difference in the way performances are rendered today when considered or when compared to a few years back? Few years back, uh, you mean uh, when I was in Kalakshetra? Probably I, when I, you started I, yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah, I'll tell you because um, uh, <coughs> Kalakshetra. I was in Kalakshetra. I left Kalakshetra in eighty two. So that is a long way back. So. But in Kalashita, I told you earlier that like how I did this, yeah, Kausalya's part, and uh, I, you know, this tears coming through. I mean, my nose started running, and all that was over. And I was so upset, and I came back to the uh, green room, and we changed, and all that. And then. we don't stay on the stage so much, but the main characters who are who are is taking, they stay on because okay. they are asked to, and we are taught. to stay at least we will take a curtain call that is sure yes. all the artists who are there will take a curtain call at the end of the show but maybe all smaller characters like all of us we will students will just go back to the green room change dress and all that main characters will stay and rukmini they will come and talk to them and maybe some guests will be there who want to come and talk to them this is all planned planned in the sense she will teach you she will say that you should stay and you should talk to these people they, they she will call you know krishnamaniaka or janalan sir come these people want to meet you okay. and you know she, she is the one who choreographed mm-hmm. but they are the ones who danced and she didn't have any problem in people going and you know congratulating the dancers they we would i mean even when i was a spectator i would climb up the stage and run and tell akka or somebody oh it was so good and so all this was planned always and even before the show also uh, there was no digital medium announcing things but <laughs> we had people standing in front or uh, like even i was i used to stand as a student offering you know uh, uh, this um, incense and all that to whoever's coming everything was planned there was no nothing which was not planned and now when you say that uh, it's nothing different maybe in a different level like okay digitally and things like that but it was always and uh, nowadays artists are so um, they i mean most Uh, solo artists are so con- so um, capable of uh, managing their speech and everything that we did not do we didn't we were not allowed to do all that but it was all always planned and i i don't it is necessary to do that mm-hmm. it is very necessary mm-hmm. now that it's become digital and it's people have been uh, become given more importance is good then people come to know they even the audience come to know what happened and why this and all that okay yes very good yes mm. uh, so you just mentioned audience um, so my next question was about that uh, like like we just talked about with the advance of the internet uh, the audience are now exposed to a lot of information uh, not just reading material but also performances they get to hear a lot of lecture demonstrations as well Uh, and uh, maybe they even get to choose the kind of programs that they want to attend do you feel mm-hmm. that over the years audience have also changed not just performers definitely audience definitely because uh, if i came when i came back from kalakshetra and i performed a padam or even a varnam they were very, they would have been very few people to watch 
because they didn't understand first of all and maybe some other language so they don't understand and they don't understand any of the actions which goes on and then i remember some my teacher one uh, music teacher of mine uh, so she asked me why do you want to sing the same line so many times you know the music Okay. And then I realized, my God, she doesn't realize each time you sing the song again, it is a different aspect of the abhinaya what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, people were not aware that you know the different ways of showing one line, the meaning of one line, the scope for abhinaya. So that way, I I was quite surprised at that time. And then I realized, yeah, naturally, because very few people are exposed to all this. But now. The, the the you know the digital world I mean this um, media mm -hmm. the internet has so much of information anybody can go in and get and then appreciate and want again as you said choose what they want to see mm -hmm. and have a comment very very uh, intelligent and fruitful comments to make yes. it is very good that it, this has happened. So I'm talking about uh, the internet. Uh, the current pandemic situation has literally uprooted uh, uh, our way of life, as as uh, as in the way art is both learnt and thought. Uh, art has become literally webified with everything mm. moving to a digital platform. Is this strange to you? It's strange is not the word. It's. I think it's a disaster <laughs> as far as learning and de teaching is concerned. Okay. What the public comes to know, I mean, uh, is got, gets to see is a different thing. But as teachers, and I think I'm also as students, it must be so frustrating to them, and it's very frustrating to me. Yes. I, as a teacher, I that's what I think, and I, I do talk to some of my friends uh, who are also having classes like I do. Okay. And they also feel that, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? Am I <laughs> doing any justice to anybody or myself, all the students, all the world? You know, things like that. We, we keep thinking because it is so very difficult. You know, if you don't have that personal thing to go and correct the child, and tell them and, you know, show them. How much do you show on a, this digital media? It's not enough. True, true. Uh, and I also wanted to say earlier, I didn't say that uh, when our f uh, course finished of four years of uh, diploma, all students had to give a performance. Okay. Not not a single performance by each day one person. No, the whole repertoire that one margam is done by the whole class. So Rukmini Devi chooses each item or maybe two people will do an item or one person will do item like that she will choose and we have to dance why because they will judge you even from that okay. how you present yourself on stage your personality on stage all that is also taken into consideration and then you're given marks plus of course your theory your practical your thala jnanam and your music jnanam all that is there but this is also important and apart from this, when you come to post-graduation, I think, I told you, they don't teach you Nathu Angra, but you have to choreograph. You have, they will give you pieces, music with Sahityam pieces, also Swara pieces like Jede Swaram or some song and they will ask, give you the meaning and uh, you have to choreograph and present. Again, that you gets marked. I mean, like it's a practical uh, part of the practical examinations. Uh, but we were not encouraged or we were not told that as soon as you go out of Kalakshetra, they never actually wanted you to go out. They wanted all the students to stay back there, you know. And I remember feeling, uh, why is, you know, teacher saying this, oh, she is going to leave now. I don't know why, if all the students stay there, what will happen? <laughs> you know, uh, but they wanted everybody to stay on there. I don't know why, but uh, I remember when they went out, uh, they never encouraged us to 
you know, you go out and teach your own items. No, never. So actually, many of our, my, my, some of the students who were with me, they were taught one margam and they would learn some more items from seniors or something and go out. And of course, they'll have classes, they'll use these items. But nowadays, one thing I find is that even before this pandemic, it had become a norm like for some years now. As soon as you finish your course and you come out, I am not talking about Kalakshetra, but anyway, this Bharatanatyam at least, even I think other things also. You have to choreograph and you have to produce in a stage only your choreography. I don't know why. I have been teaching my students for so many years. I am only training them, okay? I am training them to be good color, I mean, good dancers. And certain techniques I teach. With that, you, they can go, by the time they finish with me, they can go learn any style, anything. They will be very, very good. But <clears throat> coming out and choreographing on your own, I don't, I don't, I, I never felt the need at all. I had to teach these children all the items, there's so many items I knew. And there's so much to, you know, go deep in and learn the Abhinaya and the Nritta possibilities. That's something which I, I find very strange in Kerala especially, I think. Everybody has to choreograph and they make their own item and only perform that and then teach their students that only. And forget about all the old items. Okay, it doesn't matter, you don't do the items. Mm -hmm. But to have that discipline, you need to teach the old items. Yes. For them to know the tradition. Yes. On that, you can, they can stand on that and firmly and go anywhere. But initially, you need to do this. Yes. And also, another thing I want to say is, when you, in, when you got into the dance drama section, mm -hmm. I mean, when you are given a chance, the Kalakshetra traveled a lot. They had performances all over India and abroad also. So we were all gone. We have, I, even I have gone. I, we have gone to once it was whole Ramayana, six days of Ramayana were performed over there. It was so beautiful for us. We, we didn't have anything to do, just dance and you know have a good time. <laughs> but they did take us. The Kalashatra was I mean, we, 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 we were students, I'm sure the teachers were given some remuneration. We were so happy that we were taken. So that was another thing I wanted to say. They took the trouble to take us all and perform this dance drama. Yes. <coughs> I've traveled a lot to that with the Kalashita troupe. Wonderful. So again, so many fond, fond memories. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> Past one year, uh, no one has been able to travel social distancing, but that's the need of the situation. So like yes. I mentioned earlier, uh, everything has gone digital mm. and uh, there's so much of content available online daily. Hopefully the pandemic will finish soon. But once uh, we are back to, let's say, normal life, uh, do you think we should maintain a balance between uh, digital and the traditional methods of learning and teaching or maybe even uh, seeing performances or, or we should completely go back uh, because uh, I, I guess people are now a little, it's easier to view a lot of things digitally now. Uh, yes, <laughs> I would say teaching and uh, learning is it is a sad thing if we had to do that. Okay, higher class, I mean, you know, advanced classes, it is okay. But not the initial stages, no. You need to tell the children and cajole them and, you know, scold them and things like that, you know, just pushing them forward, you know, to go do better, do better. Uh, but the uh, performances, definitely. It, it has helped so much because like I would never have seen my friends, students dancing in Bangalore if this was not there, you know. So performance wise, I think we, we, will, we should continue this because so many people are given the uh, gift of these programs by so many very talented artists. Yes. Everybody is able to see. Like I was just uh, telling my cousin, you know, um, Parshinath Ubhadhyaya. I was just talking about him. He's such a beautiful dancer. I never knew him. 
But the fact that now he is on, you know, this net, internet, yes. it was so, I was so happy and so ha glad. Though I'm sitting alone and watching, at least I have the chance to watch him. Yes. Whereas if he, he would never maybe come to, I mean, he did come once to Erna Club. Yes. But otherwise he may not come. Now I can see him anytime I want. Yes. That's way, right. so this is a performance wise, yes. We should maintain a balance. It's good. Okay. So ma'am, like you said, uh, probably uh, programs might take a balance between digital and uh, the actual live uh, programs in a sabha. Uh, but as a performer as well, uh, the live program has a lot of aspects involved, uh, not just the actual performance because you are especially someone who's uh, been with the Kalakshetra team and you've performed the dramas as well. Uh, that that entire experience of, of performing live, that's going to be so different, right? Yes. Live performance is something which is beautiful. Like I used to think that the movies, you know, they, this person acted so beautifully. But then when I, when I got an opportunity to see the shooting, then I realized, you know, there were so many cuts. <laughs> and then where is the flow? Yeah. You know, you have to, you know, build up something and so that they must be very talented to just switch on and off. But we were not taught like that. Even if it is a solo performance, even if it is an item what you do, you need to get ready and stand on the st side stage, uh, wings and, you know, meditate and do your small little bit of exercises and be calm to go on stage. That's how it used to be. And if you are given a, a part to take uh, in the dance dramas, you didn't just go there and for the rehearsals, you just did your part and then you went back to your class. No. If you are given a small part even, you go and sit there. From the morning, from the time the rehearsal starts, you sit there and you listen to all the music what is being sung. And then you also are asked, what are the ragas? Do you know Gija? In the drama, lay, and the um, uh, Rama and uh, Dashmana, they are watching the Kinaras. Do you know what the Raga is? The Kinaras are dancing. So then, uh, I don't know. So then, uh, you know, that's how, see, you are taught. What is a Raga? So even through the dance dramas, you learn so many things. So you, and also how the seniors dance, how they use the space of the stage. You have to be there. Whether you understand or not. To me, they will be sitting there and watching you, uh, who all are getting up and going. Maybe she will say something or maybe she will not because she is busy with the rehearsal. But you have to be there and you have to behave. You cannot talk. You have to watch all the time. At the same time, sometimes you go to the green, green room mm -hmm. and of course, a lot of work is going on there. If there is a new production, a lot of stitching. Mm -hmm. and jewelry and all that and this month I told you Padu teacher and Maritam teacher they all went themselves and bought all the uh, costume uh, cloth you know and I I thought you know once I went with Padu teacher to do some shopping you know I use, you use a lot of this uh, silk saris mm -hmm. to do the costumes but then we went at that on that particular visit we went to a shop with crazy design uh, cloth and she was looking at this one and that one and I was wondering why she look you know it, it's not really like Kalakshetra I thought then later on I realized they were used for some uh, you know one gypsy type of uh, a character okay. so you know she had the knowledge of that and then just the fact that she took me with her it was a big learning for me because you know, you just don't wear a silk sari and come on stage for the gypsy or the uh, the the maids or the the some uh, the the guha who's doing the uh, you know who's taking Rama and Sita across the river. You know, uh, their costume has to be different. It's not cannot be you know silk sari. So they and all that was going on in the green room and we went and helped me and my friend, especially Sudha and me. We used to help Madhavan teacher stitch costumes, stitch the, the, the blouses had to be, you know, the, the hooks and all that we helped. And it was so good because she encouraged us 
So like that we came to know so many things like jewelry, how to take care of them. All this was part of learning. I did I, because I did all that. I think you know it has helped me a lot. Yes. Given me so much of uh, unwritten knowledge of lot of things. Yes. Sage. Yes. Even lighting. Mm -hmm. All that is also uh, you go to Najib and sir, sit with him, and then the seniors tell you, no, no, don't stand there because the light is, does not fall there. Oh, don't stand here, your shadow will come on, on the wall. And uh, the dance time was always was so particular that there is no shadow anywhere, even on the backstage, back curtain, no shadows. Okay. So the lighting was so well done and rehearsed. Okay. So I want to tell you about that. Okay. And so uh, coming back to your question, yeah, anyway. These <laughs> We were talking about how a real performance and a digital performance for the performer ah. also will be a lot different. Yes, uh, yeah. Performance is real performance, even digitally, you need to do it somewhere. So you need to know all these things color combinations, the, the color of the uh, uh, curtains, and how it will match you, match with you, your costume. All that is very important. Yes, true. We did learn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ma'am, so many uh, fond experiences, so much of learning because uh, you were telling us about uh, all the different episodes of uh, the great gurus as well as you were also giving a lot of insights to some of the stories that they told you as well. <laughs> yes. So uh, while we trail off this conversation, uh, we'd like to also witness a digital performance of yours. Uh, any oh. small piece that uh, you can show for us. Uh, I would do a small bit of uh, uh, a padam in uh, or kirtanam, I think, uh, in Shruti. Okay. Edi kirtani. Okay. A little bit. Yes. I don't know. I haven't danced for many years, so how uh, it appears, I don't know. And again, in Kalakshetra, you are never. Uh, you you don't take a video of yourself and you watch and you see okay this is how it should be this is how it should be oh I shouldn't do like this no we had no chance you had to do your best and if there was any flaws the teachers told you that is all so that I'm continuing <clears throat> I'll have to sing and do Eid kirtanai modi tan uma kendan me daya Aya Eid kirtanai modi tan uma kendan me daya Aya Eid kirtanai modi tan uma kendan me daya aya paadi pirai tanjadai dharita paramani tillai padi nadesani ed kitane mobitan uma kendan me daya uh, this is a padam uh, in which uh, again the, the devotee is telling Shiva, uh, you kept that small um, crescent moon in your head. You think it was very gay, great, but that is, but I did not say that it was small crescent moon, and I did not make fun of you. Then why are you so angry with me? That that's the gist of. Uh, the song, yeah, yes. short bit. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, the digital interaction as well as the digital performance as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Reshma, for yes, giving me the opportunity to, no, you know, I taking me back, <laughs> taking me back to all those days. Yes. <laughs> And it, it so, was also like a, a memory trip for us listening to all those stories. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you.